Shout out, thank you for your persistence. A lot. Um, we're still here, and uh, if we want to try out the cheer button, or the donate button, follow button, or the subscribe elements, should I say, not buttons, but uh, that'd be super cool. It, I mean, give me a follow, you don't have to stick with it, or even just a chat as to why you don't want to. But um, let's see where we're at in our lesson today. Uh, we've gone through that. And uh, we're playing for real now, okay? We're actually, we're, we're still doing our web dev for beginners, Twitch. And let's uh, take a look at our coding curricula website. I like this. About and things. I think the uh, best page we got right here, right here. I will kind of like where we left it before, but... <laughs> We made changes. But we're going to make a lot of uh, progress on the homepage today. Uh, so yeah, the first thing that we do each day whenever we open this up is update our logs, talk about our logs. First, so before we talk about logs, what's the lesson? Thursday, January 12th, right? Yeah, go down here, and it is going to be an introduction to HTML. Yeah, lesson eight, introduction to HTML. So let's go ahead and open that up. Close everything else. Close it all. And we'll also start our terrarium project. And that'll be pretty cool. So... But first, we need to uh, do our .dev, update our logs. And we should already have these, because this is uh, version 2. Okay, so January 12th, lesson 8, introduction to HTML. We're going to update our logs first and foremost. That's what we're taking care of now. We have our introduction to HTML lecture. What is HTML? Uh, let's see if I can get the questions right. I believe it was a dude. And, um, or was it simple? I don't know. It's been a day. <laughs> and then we also have our uh, homepage. We, looking at the homepage, let's see what we can't get done quicker because we're not going to have to solve so many problems this time. Um, we know we're going to make the icons larger, make the carousel smaller, um, Put a bar under the carousel. Uh, put a button in the hero section below this text. We need to uh, do that. Um, and ensure it's mobile responsive. Because we had trouble with that. So make the icons larger, carousel smaller. Cut, um, cut image from carousel as well. We want to do that too. Yeah, very least. And we also um, add add a fourth fourth card. Um, and we want that card to be what do we want the card to be? Technology learning community and box. That's a good overlap of all three, I think. Yeah, we'll leave that for now. That's pretty good. Okay. Uh good. Let's get going now that we need now that we know what we're doing. Uh did we yeah, update logs. Commit and push. Go back to the dot com. And we don't need to navigate. We know that it works. We've tested that a bunch of times. So let's take a look at this. Terrarium Project Part 1, our introduction to HTML. And uh, yeah, I love the way... Oops, I love the way that they describe the HTML, our CSS, and our JavaScript. It's a very good introduction to HTML. And... Uh, 
the HTML, they describe that as like the skeleton, the bare bones, the, the f most fundamental element. What supports everything else is our HTML. And then from there, the CSS is like, you know, what's on the outside, how it looks. Cascading style sheets is CSS. Another way to describe it is color and size and shape. Uh, those three things that come together to make the hat or the skin or the hair or the teeth and things like that. And then your JS, it brings it to life. Your JavaScript makes your web page interactive. It's where we can store dynamic data and pass data to uh, websites and things can get bigger and smaller. And um, it, it's all these things come together to make a professional website nowadays. It has not always been this way. Um, HTML has been around for a very long time. CSS came after and JavaScript took over with Google. Chrome, V8, Diesel, whatever. Um, Adobe, Dreamweaver, they, they ran the show for a little while. And Java did too. But JS on the front end is where it's at. So how does JS work? It's a semantic markup language as opposed to a markdown language we have markdown which is what we use whenever we write in these um in these readme full in these readme files these are markdown language um but markup is in the web page whenever i can go to right click inspect and i can see all of these different elements the div the footer the template Okay, the style, all of them are tags. Opening and closing tags with um, props pass through. Values pass through to make them dynamic and to make them rendered properly. Pretty cool. Uh, and it, how that's managed is it's managed in a semantic way. And what do we mean by semantic? And semantic means descriptive, okay? Semantic means that it tells you what's happening right there and in the space that it's supposed to occur. It's a, It represents data, not just defining how it looks. And um, I told this story earlier, and I still suffer from it. Whenever I was new to web development, whenever I was brand new at it, uh, you know, I was just always looking for the right HTML tag that would come along with the styles that I thought I needed at the time to complete the job. Whatever, I really should have been, you know, thinking about what can this element give me and how descriptive is it and um, how does it fit in the overall architecture. And that all of that plays into your search engine optimization, which is super important for making money online, as well as your accessibilities that come along with your screen reader and your aerial tags that are every bit as important as your classes and your IDs. Uh, that way they empower everybody to use the website. <laughs> And um, how does this all work? Uh, your document. Every website is a document, okay? It starts with a document. And um, from there, you, you, you say, hey, I have this document. Well, what kind of document? It's an HTML document, hypertext markup language. And every single document that's HTML has a head, a body, and you can also give it a footer, you know, um, but that's how that's the easiest way to understand it. Just kind of like uh, it. This originally came from the organization of a fax and, um, you know, also corporate govern corporate records. And I don't know if you've ever worked in a very corporate place like cubicles and RFPs and that kind of boring stuff but their documents and their templates and their formatting can be uh they can be militant about that stuff like no you must it must be like this and all of it must be filled out like that and it all starts with your head your body and your footer and and your head's filled with information the kind of information that you want to come first this is where you might load up like some of your styling and you also pass in the uh the meta tags and information to identify the website Next comes your body, and that's typically what um, your user's reading and or interacting with. And the bottom is your footer, and that's what you want, you know, like a footer sounds. You want it to display it almost like your nav bar, your navigation. Typically, nav bar handled at the top. Sometimes, nowadays, it's on the side as 
as a slider and other things like that. Um, so it doesn't always need to be a top bar. It could be navigation, right? But your footer is thought of as something that's at the bottom. Uh, yeah. And everything's navigated through a tree. Like, um, they're nodes and they branch off as, at a tree. If you think about this, um... There's, this isn't a good representation. It's Well, it's a great representation, but it's not a good representation of the node tree whenever they make it almost like a pyramid and how everything branches off, and that's how you control all of your nodes. And each one of these nodes uh, has its own values and takes up its own space. But in your document, this is what it looks like in a full HTML document. It begins with that exclamation point where you declare the document type of HTML. You still have an open and close HTML tag. Inside of that is where you have your head, your body, and then potentially your footer. And then you fill it in from there. We have an exercise later on where we fill that up. But this, so you know, is a full HTML document boilerplate, where it comes with the title, and that's what's rendered right here in the tab. Um, it comes with some meta characteristics like UTF-8. That's a character set that we're using. Uh, this HTTP equiv of U or XUA. That's at least Internet Explorer or better. Um, meta name viewport and some more. That's what makes it. Without that, it wouldn't be mobile responsive like this. Why well, you need that? Um. And we've already talked about your body can contain all sorts of things like an H1, a heading one, the largest of the headings. They go down to, I believe, H6. Uh, div is a page break. You can give these IDs or, um, and of course, classes. Everything can have an ID or a class. And then image, they're self-closing tags. Uh, and th at this point, the image would be inside of the div. Always give an alt to all your images, and your images need some sort of source. It's important too. And once you have this full HTML document filled out, then any browser can open it up just by double clicking or by pointing your browser at it through the anatomy of a URL where you have the location, some sort, and then um, some sort of series of routes or endpoints that ultimately lead you to the file that needs to be rendered. Okay. Let's take our pre-lecture quiz. See how we do this time. Uh, close this stuff. Move that down here for now. HTML stands for Hypertext Mockup Language. That's false because it's what? A body in the chat. Hypertext markup. Markup. False. All HTML tags need both opening and closing tags. So, mm, I don't remember what I answered, but I remember it being tricky. I know the image tag is self closing. Yeah, I know React components can be self closing. So all HTML tags need both opening and closing tags. I called that false last time. And it gave me a want want and told me it was true. True. No. <laughs> I guess I remember. It's been a long day. False. Okay. <laughs> Should have gone with my gut. Using semantic markup is most important for, you want to say all three. You want to say all three, but most important, screen readers. Because code readability, there, there, there's not going to be a piece of code in the world where you can't say this could be written better. Almost like even poetry or a really good essay. This could be written better. Something anybody could always say. And maintenance. Equally true. Like, I mean, code always needs to be maintained and updated and upgraded and things like that. So code readability and maintenance. Nah. Screen readers, though, they need it. They need your semantic markup to know what's going on and to help out people that use those devices. So, yeah. All right. Cool. 
Got the pre-lecture quiz. Again, HTML, hypertext markup language. They describe it as a skeleton. I don't think I did my comparison where they describe it as a skeleton of the web. I, I, I guess this comes from whenever I was house shopping, right? <laughs> I like to think of a, a web page as like a house, okay? And um, your HTML is like the foundation, okay? Where whenever you're laying down your HTML, you're very clear about, you know, where the beginning and the end is like an architect. People come in this way and they leave out that way and they need to have access to X, Y, and Z along the way, right? They go from A to B and they need X, Y, and Z in between. That's how I archetype my website. And so I begin with the HTML because I'm like, okay, this is the first thing that they're going to be seeing. Hello, second viewer. Uh, uh, like say, hello, new viewer. So I hope you know that all of the cool stuff that you see around me, the chat, these things, it's all new. Please help me test it out. Give me a follow or a cheer or something. It doesn't have to be forever. Just let's see if these uh, tabs work. That would be super cool. Um, but I was saying like uh, the HTML for a website, it's like the foundation. You know exactly where things are going to go. And then from there you add your CSS. And so your CSS is like your walls and your windows and your doors and the roof. All of these things can be different, like brick walls, wood walls, window, zero windows, all windows, all glass, you know, roof, round, pointy, um, flat, any kind, like any color, size, shape that you want on all of these things with your CSS. But... It doesn't change so much with your HTML, except if you're hiding elements and being sneaky about it. That's still part of the fundamental blueprint, though. And then if we're sticking with the uh, the home paradigm, the home building paradigm, then it's going to be uh, your JavaScript's like the electricity, okay? <laughs> Where, you know, um, electricity... It powers everything in the home, and or maybe even the plumbing as well, and the insulation, and the, the, the TVs, and the couches, and all of these comfortable things that you would just not have a website without nowadays. You would not have a website without this combination of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript that do these highly interactive things together, and are mobile responsive first. Okay. Um, and so if we're sticking to the skeleton of the web for their description, I need to quit clicking on that. Then the JS brings to life kind of like Frankenstein. That's pretty ghoulish. Uh, so in this task, let's create a folder called Terrarium. And inside of it, um, a new... A new project. So we're going to work through this now. Let me switch these up real quick. If you're just joining us, let me share the link in the chat. We're working through um, this introduction or web development for beginners from Microsoft. And we're just beginning the task of making a terrarium using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So this is basic enough. This is fundamental enough. Make a directory and make an index.html inside of it. We can do that. And then maybe call it um call it a terrarium. And we even have we're already a step ahead. We have a full uh we have a full HTML document. It wants us to do it with the command line. I mean, I guess I could you want me to do it in the command line? Can I hear the chat? You want to see these commands in action? I'll just it, give me a yes in the chat and I'll do it. Okay. But since we already have it, I'll skip that and just explain it. MK dir make directory, and that's going to make a directory called like terrarium. CD terrarium. That, that way you're actually change CDs, change directory, and terrarium takes us into it. Touch. That's create a file, not a directory. Make directory makes folders, directories. Touch makes files. Touch.html. And then code your index.html. Or you could even say at this point code.0 because you're already in that directory. 
and it would pop open with uh, the directory that you wanted. So once you have that directory, then it's, it's going to want you to begin here. Let's go ahead and delete this. Oop. Delete all this. We'll start with what it wants. Add these lines at the top of your index.html, where you have your doc type right there, your HTML opening and closing tags. It's this simple. The language is English right there is optional. But you could, of course, have, you know, Spanish or German, Dutch, Deutsch, sorry. Uh, but we're going to stick with English. That's where we're at. And um, from here, you want to add a head. Cool. It's ahead of us. AI knows. And we're going to call that a terrarium in the title. And if we close off our head, let's just go, go ahead and close the head and then prettier format, save. If we right click this, we can go to open with live server. And it has our title right here, terrarium. We can see that we're good. We don't have anything else yet, but we absolutely will soon. Actually, in title right here, let's change it. They want, us, want it to be welcome to my virtual terrarium. And watch this as I save. It goes from terrarium to welcome to my virtual terrarium. Cool. We've got UTF-8 in there. We also want these things to say, hey, it's compatible with these browsers and also give us the, uh, the window viewport. That's this. I can. This right here says it's com compatible with this version of browser or better. And this gives us mobile responsiveness. So it says, what would happen if you set the viewport meta tag like this? Viewport content with 600. Let's try it. Meta name of content. Device width. See this width is device width. So it's passing that as a dynamic value and initial scale one. So it initially everything is the scale is exactly what it's rendered. But if we change it to width equals six hundred, go to our page and look. Nothing because there's nothing on the page to render. But what it would do is just make it much smaller. If there was actually content in there, then it would change everything and pack it together. It's interesting. That I'm going to make a, maybe make a note of that. Like, why would you ask them to do that when there's nothing to demonstrate on the page? Uh, so yeah, let's add the document body. At this point, you could do body, body like this. Body. And open it up because you want something to go in there. It had a suggestion for us. But I don't think we have anything in here yet. It wants us to start with some images. So let's start with some images. Um, there are 14 images. If we open up our Explorer, I think if I just reveal in this Explorer and I go up a little bit, no, we're, we're in a completely different. So where are we at? Curricula. Let's open up this repo. Web Dev for Beginners on Twitch. I want to see it. Go in the Explorer. Those images. Rare images come from the solution. Copy. Paste. Let me. There we go. Now we have the images. Okay. We got the images from the terrarium. From the source code folder. There should be 14 images of plants. Good. Task. Add those plant images into two columns between the body tags. Okay. 
So we need to start with ID of page, a div with an ID of page. Notice that there's an open and close here, div with an ID of page. And then from there, we have two columns, one with a left container with a classic container and the other one with a right container with a classic container. And inside each of those, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven plant holders. So we need seven plant holders on each side. Right column, left column, seven plant holders in each, seven plus seven, 14, 14 pictures of plants. And then at the very end, I think we have to, yeah, we make the terrarium to put them all in. But we got to start with the images. So the easiest way to follow along with this is not what your gut says and just start from the top and write writing code from your way down All right, go as you work your way down. That's absolutely the, a bad idea. They, I mean, you might be able to pull it off with AI and IntelliSense helping you out, but it copying and pasting this isn't going to help you. What you want to do is understand the structure where I'm having a, I start with a div with a ID of page. See how I did that? I used my Emmet where I said div, so it knew what kind of element, and then I gave it a pound, just like if I was calling it on my CSS sheet for an ID, or a dot would give it a class for page, but or for anything. But we have that div with an ID of page, and we're inside of that. Now I need a div with an ID of left container and a class of container. So we would do div with an ID of left container and a class of container. Boom. And then now we need another div with an ID of left or right container, right container and a class of container. Open that one up. And inside of here, we're going to need seven plant holders. So a div with a class of plant holder. And inside of here, let's put our first plant. Let's go ahead and say image, image with a class of plant and ID of plant one and an alt alt plant picture of a plant and source we want to it's already given us quotes so dot for the directory that we're in forward slash to open up our navigation we're going into images and plant one Good. And if we want to, let's go ahead and save ourselves some trouble and put a plant in here. And it's going to be plants one through seven in the left container and eight through 14 in the right container. Let's save this. And we already have a couple pictures of plants. It's pretty ugly, but at least they're on the, they're in the web page. That's good. So let's do some more. Let's see if it generates this for us. Plant two. Good. Doing good, come on. come on. Three. No. Uh, thank you, man. Work for it. Six. Yeah, do the seven. Okay, seven. Okay, and then this one's eight. Nine. Eighteen.
over 30. Then shift alt F. Clean it up with prettier, save. Now we've got all of our pictures. Good. Okay, that works. Note the difference between spans and divs. Spans are considered inline, while divs are considered blocks. That just means divs go to the next line, while spans keep going cross, across. So um, it asks you what would happen if each of these was a span instead of a div, and it would line up horizontally if it did, instead of going vertically up and down. Did you notice that each image has the same alt tag? Is that good practice? No. Why or not? Why not? That's not helping anybody. We plant, 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 plant. Can you improve this code? Yeah, we would get in there and make a dis more descriptive image, or give a number of the image. Maybe give some intent, some semantic markup. This is a good idea because right now we don't have anything but images of plants. So let's go ahead and make the terrarium, and it wants us to go down to. Uh, Right below your opening body tag. Add the following line right below your opening body tag. So it wants us to go to the top. The opening body tag. And say, hey, oh, this H1. My terrarium. And then that, it'll say that at the very top. Okay, um, in general, buttons should be written as buttons, list should be line items, ban is for styling, add this, this is what I was looking for, add this markup above the last div, so here's our last div, Go span, span, or bang, bang, bang. Try to code in here. And what we want to do is we want first a div with an ID of terrarium. So a div with an ID of terrarium. And inside of that div with an ID of terrarium, then we have some divs with a top of a jar, a bottom of a jar. There's some walls on the left and the right. And then there's some dirt at the bottom. So think about that. Remember, there's a hierarchy to this, and that, and you need to pay attention to that. So uh, let's start with a div with a class of jar top. No, gave it, did that backwards. So we need ID class top of the jar. So a div with a class of jar walls and inside those jar walls skip this for a moment then we have a div with a class of dirt and div jar bottom inside of the jar walls we have glassy, glossy long and glossy short so div with class of jar Glossy long. Div with a class of jar. Glossy short. Save it. It's asking, hey, you put all this stuff on screen. How come you don't see anything yet except my terrarium and pictures? And um, hello, world. You would see it. It's just there's nothing there. There it is. See it. Just nothing there in between the elements yet. We've created the HTML elements. We've laid it down as the foundation for what we're making, and we're going to build on top of it. Save that. Challenge. There are some older tags. This is pretty fun. Um, there's a bunch of old tags that you shouldn't use anymore, you know, like acronym and applet, uh, <laughs> blink. There's one that's like, um, 
marquee text. There, there's all sorts of these that they still work. They're still backwards compatible. They've just been deprecated, meaning don't use them for one reason or another, and each one has a different reason. So uh, it's pretty fun looking at some of those, and that'd be some fun homework to do. Uh, take a look at some of these and say, hey, how and why shouldn't I use some of these HTML um, elements? So good. That's, uh, I think we've done a good job of knocking that out. Let's take our post-lecture quiz. Um, spans and divs are interchangeable. False. They're different. See? I don't, I guess, well, I mean, by that logic, then every HTML tag is interchangeable. There's not one that isn't. <laughs> it, it could say H1 and P are interchangeable, and you would still say, well, no, because they do different jobs. So everybody sees that. I'm clicking true. It says false. Spans are interchangeable. That means they are not interchangeable. The head of an HTML document can contain the title tag, yes. Metadata, yes. All the above, yes. Yes, indeed, okay. And you can't use deprecated tags in your markup. We just answered that one. Yes, you can use deprecated tags in your markup because web websites need to work on every web device and they need to work on all the mobile devices all around the world and so so much of it's backwards compatible um but you shouldn't it, like yes false like you because you can but they've been deprecated for a good reason smarter people than you and i decided hey don't use that for a good reason so don't use that for that reason. False. Congratulations. Okay, cool. All right. Thrilled we got that done. First part of the terrarium. Just uh, as a review, we learned all about HTML tags, including our title, meta, head, body. We didn't learn about footer, not yet, but we learned all about divs and image and H1s. It'll be a lot of fun to practice them and explore some more. Tomorrow is Friday, Friday the 13th. And we'll have an opportunity to take a look at some CSS in our terrarium. Because right now the terrarium is pretty ugly. It doesn't look so, it doesn't look so hot. It, and uh, adding some CSS is what we use. We're going to add some color, size, shape, take those elements, move them around, and make them look a whole lot better. Uh, that way it'll actually look like a terrarium, you know, maybe this jar and things like that with the lid. It'll be fun to see what we can do with it. But for now, let's get to codingcurricula.com and try to make that a little more sufferable. Um, I'm going to close this. Close that. What else we got? Um, I can close that. And here we go. And this should be available on localhost 3000. Yeah. And this is our our older one. That doesn't look so hot. And we need to uh, solve some problems on this. First and foremost, first thing I want to do is um, slow down this hero section, man. It's, it's giving me a headache. So we're going to take all of these other carousel items, because they more or less are the same anyways. And we're going to cut them out. Carousel item. Yeah. Cut it out. No whammies. Formatting. Save. Okay. It slowed down. Oh, thank God. It was giving me a headache. <laughs> so what I've done is I, I just cut out these other sections. Like there was like three carousel items and it was spinning and hurting my head. Now there's just the, the one and that's fine. That's all we need because it doesn't even look that good. 
we can slow our roll with that. Um, next thing we need to do is clean up these blocks. It does, uh, with three blocks, ugh, that, again, that hurts my eyes. We're going to make that smaller. Three blocks looks a little bit wonky um, in desktop. It looks a little wonky on tablet too, and it'll it looks it'll look better on um, with four blocks. Let's make four blocks. Or we're just gonna take the blocks that we already have. And look, there's some formatting stuff we can right here to make it better as well. We're gonna pull all the small junk out. better and then we're going to take another column should all be in the same row copy paste that save got another one and what did we decide that this should be documentation Need another icon. Font, awesome icon. What do we want for docs? Magnifying glass. So font, awesome. Magnifying glass. <laughs> so. Copy that here looking for answers. There we go. That looks good. Except they're kind of small. The icons are small, and that's on our list of things to do. And um but I think that's as simple as passing size like props. Because he here we're passing in it. Let's look at the font awesome react props. What can we pass through here? The like icon. You're passing some props right there. Icon. I think you can also pass like size. Icon syntax. Buffy. Size, yeah. Fixed width. Cool. Inverse. Awesome. Um, a list item. That's fun. Rotation. Cool. I bet you we can make them rotate. Uh, flip horizontally, vertically, or both. In. There's a border. Pulled. Wop and duotone. Icon. Uh, last name. Power transform. <laughs> a mask layered. Oh, cool. There's so much stuff you can do. Let's, uh, I don't know, man. Um, try some of this rotating stuff. Just try some rotation. Yep. Just try it. But we definitely want to try size. Uh, where we also say size equals. What's it give us? It gives us all these options. Um, Excel to start. Save. Where's our. Okay. <laughs> and, and it rotated 90 degrees. And it's bigger. Um, how much bigger can we get? Uh, that was XL. Try double XL. No. Nelson. 2X. My 
like x, yeah. 2x. 4x. Maybe here we need to get. I want to give. I want it to spin though. Didn't it say like just say spin. <laughs> okay. They made that too easy. Uh, spin. No, cool. Uh, thank you, font. Awesome. Uh, that looks okay. So we want to give all these the size of four x. So let's find the other Facebook icon. Or font awesome icon 4x. Font awesome icon 4x. 4x. Okay, that looks better. Technology, learning, community, and docs. And the big page looks better too. Oop. How's mobile look? Mobile let me down earlier. And uh, I think that's because all this needs to be in a container. Didn't I? Did I get all this in a container? Okay, all this is in a container. Why didn't it? I think all this needs to be too. See what happens there. Import container from React Bootstrap and we place container. Better. Oh, uh, what about my nav bar? Nav bar is good. Okay, footer's good. Effect. That looks more worried. Mean. Is it in the middle? Okay, so we like that it's in the container like that. Maybe it's because it's a container in a container. So, get rid of this. It's already in a container. It bumped out a little bit. Effect. Um, hmm. Save it for now. Dial these cards, because we're seeing these cards. That's a bit of a problem, too. One has width. We want to get rid of that. We don't want any inline styling if you can help it. I think we need to get like a 15. Save that. They line up. Close together. <laughs> uh, not bad though. I mean, it's filling the page. So is that, that, that must have been what was going on. These were too wide. And that was overriding it. Okay. Maybe. We'll see. Let's see uh, what happens whenever we add a little bit of styling. How much time we got left? About 12 minutes. Try to remember to put a five minute counter on here. About contact link, privacy policy, all good. Curricula. Okay, so now we want to style these cards. So inside of our container, let's give this a uh, class. Zero. Yeah, here. Let's just do it like this. Where we'll do div, div with a class of um, home page. Like the so here. div.
this this give it class name of home page save that and then we need to create a new file here called home.css where we'll make sure we got a grip everything background color red import dot forward slash home css things should turn red and burn our eyes yeah okay good so we brought in that and get rid of that immediately and then now we need to navigate there where we say hey dot home page dot card see what happens there Not responsive. I mean, it's moving, which is kind of cool, but it's not moving like we want. I mean, if it was going to do that, then it should be free card. That's even worse. Is it? <laughs> I mean, listen to me question myself. Is it? I mean, it's more. I don't know. Um, max width. So let's say we need to make these responsive. So let's say max width to RM gives it a little more padding. And uh, max width, we want to say 4 RM. No, we want to say like 20 or 30. 50 here. Making this. I don't know. Maybe we'll leave it like that. We won't fight it too much because it does look nice. It is an improvement. And how does it look on mobile? There's no dragging and no nonsense. Pretty good. What we wanted. And it gives time to work on this stuff. Yeah. Okay. I guess uh, we'll leave that at that for now. Well, let's give each of these cards a little bit of um, this margin. I don't like that. Let's give it two rim. See, now they want to line up. Whatever it's standard, and it's a little more like that. So that looks good. What about here? Okay, I like that. And then inspect. Now, but now they're shifty. Two rem. So say one rem. Adding again one rem. Maybe they fit in there. That was maybe that's the problem. They're just too big. So point five rim. Now they're closer together. And five rim. Now they want to fall apart. Seven five. But if they were in a container, 
and the container max width was I think this is what max width. Don't want that max width. Still too big. Um We'll see how it pushes and how it looks. Bring these back in. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, formatter, save. <laughs> Even worse. Let's try again. Let's try again. Okay. What have you got for me? That's okay. See, it's telling it margin and being specific here. How's that look on mobile? Not shifting around, but kind of weird there. I don't like that. 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 Now they're all together. What about margin? No. Margin. 10 pixels. Fifty though. That's good. About oh, just instead of that point five EM. Not shifty. Okay. Whatever. We're gonna we're gonna let that slide for the moment. And then, but we need a little padding. We gotta have some padding. Point five. Point five. <laughs> now we're back to that. Effect. Not shifty though. That's good. Not on mobile. But we want that. And it's got some padding. It looks pretty good on mobile. It looks weird. On tablet, but good on desktop. I'm gonna take that as a win. Effect. Okay. And uh, what else do we need? Last thing we want to do is maybe add like a line underneath the hero section. Space a little bit. And underneath here. A line from bootstrap to in section. But we don't need. But we don't need that. What have you got for it? No disappointment. Um, because we could just give it a div. Why are you? Oh, because it's outside of that. So I guess we would have to do that. That's why it was like, what are you doing? And it thought I was crazy. But we could. Let's act a little crazy. Let's make this a fragment. There we go. Fragment. Then inside the fragment. Div. With a class name of break. Div. The class name. Break. What is it? What is a React bootstrap break? Uh, breakpoints. Extra small, small. We don't want that. We 
for the line break. Seven, nine, and bootstrap. I think it's this container, fluid container, column. Do we have to ask the chat? The chat. chat. We don't need it, and we're out of time. This has been great. We've learned a lot together. We've done a lot of great stuff. And it looks good without. If you ask me, it looks pretty good without. We don't need that line. Let's take a look at our website. Everybody sees that it's responsive here, right? And these buttons need some work and we need to add some content but man if it if it looks like that whenever i pull it up on my website i'm gonna or on my cell phone i'm gonna be awful happy uh it's been great working with you today guys thank you so much let me say thank you looking forward to seeing you in the future remember i'm working through this curriculum every monday through friday 1 p.m central time um our next lesson let's see today was the 12th, lesson 8, Mars 13th, lesson 9, lesson 9, CSS, we'll be styling the terrarium. Should be a lot of fun. Hope to see you there. Everybody have a great day. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.